Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? <laughs> I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> As you can tell, it's probably echoing. Um, but my husband is asleep in the other room, so I can't go um, <laughs> in there and film. And we have the thunderstorm sounds playing and um, the fan is going, so you probably wouldn't be able to hear me anyway. And I just got up from gambling downstairs. Um, I was down, I was not hit, I never hit anything when I um, gamble in Vegas, and then I just sat down at this machine that I had never seen before and it looked kind of fun, and um, I was like down, 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 and I was like getting ready to go back up to the room, and then I hit $400, and then it took me like three spins later, it took me up to $800 and like $80. I was like, oh my God. So I left with, um, cause I kind of like figure out how much cash I'm gonna have for the day and like spending and stuff like that. I like left with all of my cash for the spending for the day doubled, which was like, you know, like, well more than that because I, I, I won all that. So, and I played up and down for a while too. So that was really fun and these machines I was sitting at, they must have like <clears throat> been doing really good for everybody because there was like this one guy that came over, he was like probably 23 or 24 and he was with two of his guy friends and he was playing, he kept on hitting and he kept on, there was like three machines on a kiosk and he kept on moving um, around like to the other two machines and then if I moved, he would move to where I was sitting and stuff and we just kept on hitting and hitting and hitting. So anyway, um, it was a fun day today. I'm actually like, I'm kind of like physically tired, but mentally I'm like very alert and very awake, which is the total opposite of yesterday. I was exhausted. So um, we got up today, um, Melissa and Jason and Aaron and Eric went and ate uh, brunch or breakfast at the buffet downstairs, but Alex and I slept in. He did some work. I made a video, um, a drama video and got stuff up. Oh, the reason this vlog is up so late is because honest to God, um, when I came back up from going to the Zach Bagans Museum to go down to meet Alex and um, Jason and this other, um, the husband of, th this other couple came, I'll explain in a second, this other couple came into town tonight and the wife went with us to the Zach Bagans Museum. The husband hung out with them and then Alex's cousin Maya came over and so, they were hanging out at the Wynn at the lakeside. If you ever get a chance to come to um, Las Vegas and go to the Wynn, that is really, really cool. There's like a show every half an hour on the lake. It's really pretty. I just sat there and watched one show and had a Diet Coke, and then I went and ate with um, the crew that I came to the museum with, because Alex and them, they had like eaten earlier. So anyway, um, we got up and then they, after br brunch, they went shopping at the Caesar Forum Shops, and we were going to leave to go to the museum from there, so I just took a shower, and hmm, honestly, Alex and I just kind of took our time this morning, and um, it was kind of nice, just like hanging out in the hotel room, <laughs> and it was just, you know, it was relaxing, and so the only thing is, it's like there's no coffee maker in this room. So I didn't have any coffee today. I'm like missing out on my coffee. And I like broke into, um, we didn't have any soda or anything. I'm like, I have to have something. <laughs> so I broke in the mini bar and Alex is like, are you seriously gonna pay $7.50 for a Diet Coke? I go, is that how much it is? Cause I don't know how much it is. It's usually, it, it seems like it's gonna be more expensive than it is. I don't think it was that. I think it was like three or four bucks for a Diet Coke. But I was like, I'm having a Diet Coke. I don't drink. So y'all pay outrageous amounts of money for your liquor drinks. I don't, I'm gonna have a mini bar Diet Coke. Cause I had to have some caffeine. So. Um, and then I took a shower and we got, that was not, oh, that was my, this leather chair that I'm sitting on. I did not just pass gas, I swear, here I'll show you. I'm sitting on like a leather bench. <laughs> anyway, so I would own it though, no, I totally would, because the one that um, smelt it is the one that dealt it, you know. Anyway, did you hate that when kids would say that? It was bad enough that I was being bullied. On top of that, okay, for them to have to accuse me of a fart would be like the worst. So, and it did happen. Oh, she left me two lotions. I asked for two lotions and she left us two lotions. But, um, so then we went to the Forum Shop malls and walked around, did a little shopping and stuff. Not much, really. And then, um, oh my gosh. Oh, and then 
Melissa and Aaron and I, and Eric, Aaron's husband, we took a lift from there to the Zach Bagans Museum. And I, I don't know how I'm gonna put it together, but, um, well, I'll explain in a second. Well, I don't know how I'm gonna put it together, but I filmed footage, out, footage. I filmed some video on my phone outside of the, uh, the outside of the museum. And like David Koresh is from Waco, like they have, he has his car and it's parked outside. And that was real creepy. And then his um, hearse is there. And not David Koresh's, the Zach Bagans hearse is there. So I walked outside, I talked to Melissa and Jason. I was gonna actually, and Aaron, I was gonna see like what they're, what they thought afterwards and film it. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow if we have a chance and then put it in a video together. Um, they don't allow any filming or any photography inside. And you have to turn off your phone actually when you go inside to the museum. The battery is at the halfway mark. So I may have to stop this and go get my battery from the other room. I have, I actually have one full battery and then I forgot to charge the other one. So I'm gonna have to charge a battery tonight. But anyway, so we got there. I was kind of actually a little bit more freaked when I got there. Um, it's very laid back, like you like sign in, they have you sign all these consents on this iPad and stuff when you get there. I think you can do it before, like online, but we did it when, well, yeah, we did it when we got there. So basically just saying that like liability clauses that you won't, you know, blame the Zach Bagans Haunted Museum for anything. So I didn't know really what to expect and I started kind of getting a little freaked out before we went inside. Okay, first of all, I don't like haunted houses. Okay, I don't do them, I don't like them. I don't like being scared. And I knew it wasn't gonna be that. But then on top of that, like, well, it was kind of weird which things each of us thought were scary. Because I really thought, um, I don't know what I thought it was gonna be going in there. I just thought like, it was eerie, but it wasn't It wasn't what I expected. And it's like low lit, <clears throat> and they have literally crap everywhere. There's like a lot of filler stuff as far as I'm concerned. And I, honestly, I thought some of it was kind of corny. That's just me. Um, but like, I don't know really what I thought. Like, I don't know. I thought I would have some kind of like really strong reaction to some of this stuff. Now, I don't know how much you guys believe in this stuff, but I did wear my cross, my St. Christopher medal, and black tourmaline, which is supposed to like um, keep like the possession, you know. They tell you all these stories like while you're waiting and while you go in, oh, this person passed out, and people that go in this room, we've had so many nosebleeds, we can't even count it. And then like afterwards we were talking about this, and we were talking about this at dinner tonight, and our friend said, that just flew in tonight, she said, um, but we're also like out in the desert, and. So it could be maybe from that. I was like, I didn't even think about that. And they say like people have headaches. Like, well, I had a headache before we even got there, you know? Um, it's really long. It's like two hours and you stand the whole time in these little small cramped rooms. My back was killing me. We actually, all of us, like we sat down on the floor at one point because we, we were like waiting to go in a room at the very, very end. We were like in the middle of this like hallway and I was like, and um, Eric sat down on the floor. He's like, I can't do it anymore. And so I was like, I gotta sit down on the floor too, but I don't know if I'm gonna get back up. The guide thought it was hilarious. She's like, are you guys having a picnic? Every, all the guides there are dressed like steampunk, <laughs> okay? Like, they all have, like, just, you know, like, long black outfits, and they're just dressed very much like, you know, some of them even have, like, top hats and stuff. You guys, it's, like, overboard. It's, like, the dark circus kind of thing. Um, very much that kind of vibe, which, in all honesty, for me, kind of takes away from it a little bit. Like, it almost is so theatric at that point that it's kind of like, mm, I don't know. So, anyway... Let me tell you about the rest of the day, and then I'll tell you about the Zach Bagans Museum, because I could talk about that on and on and on. So afterwards, we came back here, and we were, like, exhausted from, like, shopping and then standing on our feet all day long and stuff like that. So we just wanted to eat and sit down. I was like, I just want a Diet Coke, and I want to sit down. So we dropped our stuff up in the room, off of the room and then um, went over to the lakeside place, and then... Um, they didn't want to eat because they had been sitting out there and had like some other stuff or whatever. I don't know. They just weren't hungry. So we, um, 
uh, the five of us that had gone to the museum, we just went and ate at this restaurant called Charlie's, which is like in the middle of the casino at the Wynn. It was actually really good. And I had a side salad, and then I had veggie nachos. They were really, really good. I was so hungry. And I had a Mr. Piv and a water. <laughs> Did somebody just text me? No. And um, Melissa also hit tonight in the casino. She hit for, I think, $264 on the Monopoly machine. We were all sitting in. So yeah, the first time I hit 180, and then I hit 440. I couldn't believe it. I wish I had like taken a picture of what I hit, actually. Anyway, I mean, I just took a picture of the money, and then Melissa hit 234. She sent a picture. Here she is. <laughs> she, oh, no, it's not the Wheel of Fortune. It's the, uh, what do you call it? <clears throat> the, um, the Wizard of Oz machine. There she is sitting there. She's so cute. So anyway, um, and then we just kind of like walked around and gambled. <clears throat> Eric and I hung out gambling and then like the girls went and played like Wheel of Fortune and stuff. And then... Alex and Jason and the other couple went up because they flew in today and so they were like super exhausted. So they went up to their, they came over um, after like we ate and stuff and like they met up with all of us. Like, so he was with Alex and them and she was with us. So they like met up and then they went up to their room and they came and said hi like while we were gambling and stuff. So Eric and I gambled for a little while together and then I was getting ready to go up about the same time that he was. Everybody else had already gone up. Alex walked Maya to her car, and um, Jason and Melissa had gone up, and so it was just Eric and I. And I was getting ready to go up, and then I had that money. And so I stayed down there for like another hour and a half. I had fun, it was really fun. And I just got up to the room right now. So, Alex has his J-Lo beauty right here, which he really, really likes. This is that, that hits single gel cream cleanser. He really likes it. And, they just sent me a whole box of stuff that I'm gonna review on my review channel, but he really, really likes um, this Disco product, you can see. We both, it's like eye cream that you put on the hair. Isn't that cool? You put it underneath your eye. It's got like a little bit of a tint to it. So it's supposed to like take away stuff, but like at the same time, it has, I think it has a little bit of, it's eucalyptus, but it looks like it has a little bit of color in it, like concealer, but I don't think so. I love these products. So I'm gonna review those. He's got all this, he's got, Skin Medica, Total Defense and Repair, Self, I mean, Alex knows these skin products like nobody's business. Um, all my stuff is laid out over here. Do you wanna see what I have? Okay, I'll show you. So when I was growing up, we called this Adopt Kit. We don't have fancy ones. Well, actually, I think my cousin gave Alex his and he has this one. But when I was growing up, we called them Adopt Kits, but I guess now you call them cosmetic spec or something. So I have my Harry's razors in here. And then I have two Neutrogena um, Hydro Boost hydrating things. And then I have a loofah sponge that I haven't used yet. Do we even have shower gel in there? I don't know. And then I have, this is kind of like the Scentbird things. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's something else. It's family friendly stuff. Um, <laughs> I can't believe, see, old Peter would say, um, I'm not going to show that on here, but anyway, you can get things in carry sizes, let's just say that, okay? I have a code at adamandeve.com. So then I have scissors because on every trip you always need scissors, and then I have, I can't believe I pulled that out. Okay, I have um, Laneige Lip Sleeping Balm. And then I also have the Laneige Water Sleeping Mask. I should actually put these out because maybe I'll do them tonight. And then people are like, what is that? It's lube, okay? That's what it is. And it's like, it comes in these little bottles. You can get them on adamandeve.com. Okay. And then, I'm so embarrassed. Anyway, well, I'm married. We've been married for 10 years. I guess it's whatever. Um, <clears throat> And then, this is tanning lotion. I don't think I can get any more tan. It's not tanning lotion, it's tanning oil. So, I don't think I can get any more tan than I already have, but whatever. And then all the lotions are in the other room. Like the 30s, the 50s, all that stuff are in the other room. That's why this is wrapped in here, because I didn't take it to the pool the other day. Um, okay, then I have the Malin and Getz oil that I just bought because I love the smell of the Malin and Getz stuff. I think I'm actually going to get the cologne. This was $32. The cologne is $90, but I really, really like it. 
And the smell is dark rum. I think that's what it's called. Dark rum. And if, like, they have them in hotels. I feel like I have something in my eye. Um, don't you hate these like really close up mirrors like this, these vanity mirrors? Well, I'm sure a lot of you like use these for your makeup. But I feel like you can see like every pore. Don't get close to my skin, just out. Um, but if you ever stay in a hotel, hotel, like artsy one, sometimes they have these Malin and Getz things, which I love, like the shampoo and conditioner and lotion, and that's, and then I saw it because that Chris Olson, who, he and his boyfriend have a channel called Chris and Ian, like they use these products in the shower, they were showing it like an Instagram story or something, and I was like, oh, like I should buy some of that stuff. So I did, and you guys, I'm so happy with the shower gel and the lotion, it is like unbelievable. But buy the scent Dark Rum if you get it, I don't like the other scent, I can't remember what it is. But this scent is so good. Okay, so that's the first thing I have. Well, here's my toothbrush, I have a black toothbrush, and then I have a little we travel the size of this, of Crest. Crest scope. Alex's our toothpaste always has to have the whitening thing in it. I don't think it works, but anyway. And then I have um, my Harry's razor, which I swear by. There's a little remote right here for the TV. And then I have my Art of Shaving shaving cream. And then, okay, and you can you used to be able to get the Art of Shaving shaving cream at Target. They don't have it anymore. So you can get it at um, well, I bought that on Amazon Prime because I could get there that quick and I needed it because I was out of it. This is sandalwood. You do not need a whole lot of it. Oh my God, it smells so good. I like to use stuff like everything has a little bit of a scent to it. Um, this is called Pacino. This is my new favorite hair care product, which I didn't do my hair today. I just took a shower and threw on a hat. But this is my new favorite hair care product because it's like a matte paste and it's Pacino's. You can get this at Target, and they have it in a big size, and they have it in these smaller sizes. And this is the Signature Line Matte. And it doesn't really have much of a smell to it, after I just said that about smells. It's like a gray matte, and I love it. And it washes out real easy, too. I bought this product um, at my hair salon, and it smells like honey, and I love it, but it kind of weights down my hair. Now, I have not used this yet. This is the Art of Shaving Skin this is, hold on, I have my reading glasses right here. This is the lavender, and maybe I'll use this tonight, Roman Chamomile um, Overnight Balm. I think I've maybe used this once. And then it just like has a little, so it's like for men, but I mean, women could use it too. But. And then my deodorant, which I swear by the original Old Spice, I love it. I love the small gold spice. Now, this was what I thought I was pulling out of my bag. <laughs> and that is like scent bird, but this is Chanel Blue. And um, Alex has his scent bird once in the other room. We always carry like in our backpacks. You can take it out. And... See, Alex has with him Bulgari. And he has Dior Sauvage, which actually Frank sent this to us. And we are still going on. I love this. Whenever my husband, like in the morning, he'll, uh, after, when he's leaving to go to work, he always sprays this on, like, because his colognes are on the other side of the bedroom, like by me. So he'll spray this on, and then he comes over and gives me a kiss. And it smells so good. I love that cologne. And then I have my Creed right here, which they have Creed stores out here, like everywhere. And then my uh, my contact solution. So that's that. And oh, I do have something else in here. Hold on. Inside, more secrets. Should I show? I have AccuView Oasis. 2.5, that's what my contacts. And then band-aids and Q-tips. That's inside. I don't think I have anything on the outside. Zipper. Maybe Q-tips. Oh. Oh. A must on vacations. Little fingernail clippers. 
And then more band-aids, because you guys know how it is with my feet. And more Q-tips, because you always want to keep your ears clean. And that is everything that I have with me. And we take our stuff and, well here I can show you, it's cute. <laughs> we take our stuff and we like, here's my side, and there's Alex's side. And these are these hairpins that he puts in his hair to keep the curls back. He swears by that Diva Curl stuff. Now, I know there's been like bad stuff that's come out about it, but Alex is like, you cannot convince him. He loves Diva Curl products. And then he has another eye cream there, then his toothbrush, and then stuff, hair stuff at the very end. It's like an elixir. And then he's got these two skincare things, and then that at the very end. So, this is a nice bathroom. I like this bathroom. Okay, so that was our night. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you what else we had because I know people like to hear about the food. Um, Melissa, okay, so to start, Melissa ordered um, potato skins for everybody, but I didn't eat it because it had bacon on it. And then Aaron got a pretzel. Oh, I actually took a picture of it and put it on Instagram. Aaron took, got a pretzel. It was really, really good. And it had like melted pub cheese on one side and then this mustard that you could do as well. And here, I'll show you what it looks like. There's Melissa and I at the Zach Bacon's Museum. They're just walking around here. I'll show you. You can see the car in just a second. Here's the car. That's Eric. There it is. That's David Koresh's car. It freaked me out. That did. And then this was like this garden inside of the wind. It's beautiful. And this was the lakeside thing. At the wind. There's like this television. Not television. There's like this big screen. Oh, the battery is dying. Let me show you these then. You can see, I don't know if you can see, there's like this big screen. And like, this is the lake down here. And now it's like talking head kind of things going on. And then here's me with the pretzel, can you see? And that's it. So, okay, let me go change the battery and then I will be right back. I'm like out there in the dark trying to find a place to plug in this. So this is what my camera battery charger looks like. So see, I was just like, and if it's like charged, it's green, and if it's not, it's red or orange. So I'm constantly, I have two of these, and I'm constantly <laughs> replacing them. Charge it right there. There. Here you can see what it looks like being charged. See, it's like orange, can you see the light? And then when it's done charging, that light will turn green. And then that means, Peter, your battery is charged, or so you think. Okay, so this is, I wish I had lip balm in here. Oh, I do, I have this little Lynette. I can use this little mask, can't I? Lip sleeping mask, here, let's put a little bit of this on. Cause it's kind of, this is how the beauty and phone stores do it. So it's, cause it's kind of like a little lip, a lip balm. Okay, so this is the deal. We had to wait outside forever in the heat and um, they take 12 people in at a time and then they have like TV screens outside. They have like misting fans. Actually quite a few people were like, in my comment sections, um, they were like, I don't know if it was on my vlog or my drama channel or whatever, but they were like, the Zach Bagans Museum is really hot. I didn't really think it was that bad inside. I really just didn't. So anyway, um, so you wait outside and they like play these like, um, clips from like the ghost adventurers and it's like different stories of, or maybe there's like things just filmed for uh the museum but they're like different stories that they're going to show you when you go in there like peggy the doll and that you're not supposed to look in its eyes um you're supposed to say hello or hi peggy and then when you leave goodbye peggy and you literally like walk by the, di the doll, doll that quick. Me and this girl that was in front of me, this girl that was in front of me, <laughs> she and I, Alyssa was like, I'm looking in the doll's eyes. Because if you look in the doll's eyes, I don't know, I'm supposed to do, I can't remember, possess you or something like that. And Alyssa's like, I don't care, I'm not scared, I'm looking right in the doll's eyes. So then this girl and I, we were like Russian, <laughs> we were like out, we were like out of, out of the um, Peggy room like real quick. So. You go in and, uh, oh my God, I have a new, from these sandals I wore, I have a cut on my foot. You guys, I just have to be barefoot forever, I guess. <laughs> so, you go in 
and there's like this waiting area and they ask you, you can ask any questions, you can go to the bathroom. We did VIP, which is called RIP. Everybody in our group except for two people were RIP. And it's like the VIP and you get to go into seven extra areas. Okay, listen, I'm just gonna tell you, if you go to the Zach Baggins Museum, it's like $39, it's like $35 extra to be like a VIP or RIP and you get a t-shirt, which at the end, the t-shirt's real cute. It's in the other room where I go get it. And it says, and you can get it any size, they have it up to 4XL from small, from like extra small to 4XL. And so if you're like the RIP group, you get a free t-shirt. And the guy was like, the t-shirt to buy it is like $39. So you're actually, or $37. So you're actually getting a deal, which then I told Alex, he's like, yeah, but you get a t-shirt, which I was like, yeah, but I probably would have bought a t-shirt anyway. <laughs> so it's like, whatever, you know? I don't know that I think the extra rooms and stuff are really like that big of a deal. It's really just like the t-shirt, but whatever. Um, they make kind of a big deal about it on the tour. So, you guys, I have to tell you, like, it was okay, but like, I wasn't really scared, but like maybe once or twice. And it wasn't because of looking at the things. There's like, you go through this one section when you're going from like one area to the other of the house, and they have all these clowns. And the clowns legit look like people. And, and I honestly did not even like that they did this. I didn't think that it was like, it fit into like the museum kind of theme. Like at one point, it was like right behind me and in front of Melissa. So I don't really know what happened, except for I heard somebody go, whoa. And then, like, this other person, like, with Mel that was behind Melissa or something, like, shouted or screamed. And I was like, I don't like that. And it was, like, all these clowns, and they literally looked like every single one of them could have been a person. They were, like, people size. And I'm, and I'm not scared of clowns, but I don't like clowns, you know what I mean? Especially, like, scary clowns like that. And it was, like, a whole room of scary. You just kept on going and going and going. Oh, one of the things that they had at the very end that was cool was that they had the original Chucky doll that was used in the movies, but more than that, more uh, interesting than that, they had the original, um, they have kind of like, so they would pay like homage to like a certain story, right? So you're going down and they have like the original, um, they have the picture of the kid from Poltergeist with the clown, do you remember the clown that like is under the bed? Okay, so in Poltergeist, they have a picture of that kid with the clown and then they have kind of like this memorabilia thing about Heather O'Rourke who played the little girl and how for, it's so weird because I just last night, so I was like looking down on this and I was like, oh, Poltergeist 3 would be kind of fun to watch in here because it takes place, I think in Sears Tower or something like that in um, Chicago. And I was just like, we're like really, you know, like these buildings are high and that would be kind of fun. So, um, and then they like list the four people that were killed. Like, and did you guys know that? Like, on the Poltergeist, the original movie, like four people have like died in like weird ways. I think the older sister was like killed by a boyfriend or something. It was like, anyway, I was so tired. That was at the very end. I was ready to go. That was like literally as you're walking out. Um, and then it goes into like this one room that had, I mean, if you could like just be in there forever, like there's some really interesting stuff to look at. Like, you know those machines that you like put a quarter into? It's like in that movie Big with, I can't think of his name, but you know, guy that played Forrest Gump. Um, you know that machine, like those machines where you put like 25 cents in it and it like gives you your fortune? They have like those machines everywhere. And they're, but they're all called old, like one of them was called Grandma something and it was like, anyway, I don't know. They had all of those kind of things. He just has all kinds of collectibles all over the place. And most of it, I don't even think it's haunted. So when you go in, they take you around the front of the house, you go in through the front of the house and you go in this room. And, and actually this was like where one of the scariest things that I saw, it was scary to me. She, the girl, so there's different guides and they take you, like they kind of like, one guide takes you through so far and then another one, there's like six to 10 tours going on at any given time. And they also do flashlight tours at night in the dark where you can kind of go where you want to go. I would not do that. I can tell you, like, first of all, it was not that interesting to me. I mean, I'm glad I went um, because I would have wanted to go had I not. So I'm glad I went, but like, I wouldn't go back. Like, it's, it wasn't like one of those for me, like, I have to go back and see it again, where there were people there that had been on the tour before and stuff and there were a lot of like in our tour there was a girl she I don't know she looked like she was 15 or 16 with her mom and she had on like a uh, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre like t-shirt there was like a lot of that like a lot of 
And, and that's kind of how I felt going into it. Like, I wasn't sure how I felt about that stuff. Like, I don't know that I like, like, murderabilia. Like, I don't know that I, I you know what I mean? Um, so anyway, I'm, I, I, I'm, the jury's still out on all that stuff for me. So, I guess it kind of depends on how I feel like the story is told, if that makes sense. So anyway, you go in this room and she shows you a bunch of stuff and there's like some doll and this doll closet that you can go back on that's supposedly haunted. Everything that they tell, they always tell a story about like when this item came to the museum, like 15 people passed out immediately and somebody had to be rushed to the, I mean, it's, and none of that happened on the tour. There was, but like every story, there was a story like that. So that was the first thing, and then like if you were like part of the RIP group, you got to go into this doll closet and look at this doll. I don't love dolls, they creep me out, okay? <laughs> like they're spooky to me, so I was like, whatever. So we're all in there and we came out. Now I'll tell you what was in that room that I, I did think was kind of scary, was they had the um, two chalices that Ant Anton LaVey, um, the leader of the satanic church or whatever that he used in actual rituals and they had a letter that he had written and something else. I don't know. There was like a lot of like satanic stuff in this. I don't like that. I don't mess with it and and I don't I just don't like it, you know, so there was that and then where did we go after that? We went across the room the hall. You like kind of go like this back and like diagonal back and forth. I don't remember what the next room was. I'll just tell you the things that stood out to me. The true crime room was not what I thought it would be. Um, there's like a lot of true crime. The, the majority of the stuff that he has is like Manson stuff. You could tell like Zach Bagan either, get, Bagans either gets his stuff through auctions or because he has close connections with people. And I think he's like friends or knows like Charles Manson's grandson who I didn't even know Charles Manson had any kids. He has Charles Manson's ashes in there. He has pictures, toothbrushes, um, the uh, outfit that he wore right before. He uh, just everything in there. His his shower shoes from anyway. The whole it's it's a lot. Um, and they have paintings of John Wayne Gacy, the last pack of cigarettes that he gave to his stepdaughter. Um, Quite a bit of Richard Ramirez stuff, the, the shirt that he wore, a letter that he wrote, authenticating it, um, who, Ted Bundy's glasses. Oh, they have all this evidence. It's like in this bag from Ted, Ted Bundy thing. That was kind of interesting, honestly, because it still has like evidence tape, like it says on it. Um, and then like some people I hadn't heard of. And actually, I need to talk to Mel about this because this would actually be an interesting book to read um, for the for the True Crime Book Club. So Mel, don't let me forget this. There is, um, there was a whole room dedicated to this guy called the Kansas City Butcher. I've never heard of this guy. He killed like six men or something and most of them were like prostitutes. You guys, that was probably one of the most horrific rooms. Um, and there was like pictures up of how they were like bound in this bed and he like tortured these people. Like, it was so sad. Like the whole thing, they had like video, like they had, okay, so they'd have like these old TVs and then they'd have like video footage from interviews, like running on it. Like it looked like they were like interviews from the past. Um, there was that. That was like the true crime stuff. They had a whole room dedicated to Ed Gein. They had the iron, uh, cauldron that he used to like burn his stuff his victims in and then they had a shovel those were the only two things and there was an entire room dedicated to it it was kind of like that and then there was like this whole circus aspect to it so they had like a whole area where they had like three specimens from like the freak show at um like but then they would say but that's not actually from the circus it was like this sunken the shrunken head of some it just you guys some of it was just like out there to me and when they brought it into the museum this guy was in the crawl space they never explained why he was in the crawl space and he heard get out of here and so then if you were like in the roep group you could go in and they had this whole thing built around the crawl space where you could look in the crawl space but you didn't even really know if it really is truly the crawl space 
do I sound like a skeptic? Because this place made me more of a skeptic than even before I was, and I wasn't one before. I believed in this stuff. But so anyway, and then you look in there. Aaron thought she heard something like a buzz, a bee buzzing or something in there. I was like, girl, I'm not. The only thing I wouldn't do was you had to crawl from one room to the other. Um, like this was the only thing that like RIPs could do, and I was like, I'm not doing it. And it was literally like a tunnel between these two walls, and you had to crawl on your hands and knees in the complete pitch black. And I was like, oh no, I'm not doing this. This was, and that was at the beginning. So I didn't know what I was getting myself into. It just like it. I I never. I don't know. I expected it to be like super scary. Um, the Dr. Kravorkian stuff was very sad, but I will say, I thought they did it in a, a somewhat honorable way. Um, they kind of explain the history of Dr. Kravorkian and then like and what he was doing, and they show this video. This guy saying that the Smithsonian someday will want the van. They have the van where he did his, all this stuff in there. So you go into this room and you look at this van and they have pictures of the people that were like... And it has their story next to them. It's very... Like, that's what I'm saying. And then... But this is what's creepy is... He, like, wrote this song and then he would play this song. Like, if they requested music, he would play this song for them, like... And it, true story, sounds like funeral music. And he would play this song to, like, peacefully, like, relax them before it happened. And did you guys know he did this in the van? I didn't know all that. I mean, I knew kind of, but, like, anyway. And you're, like, literally in this room that's, like, the size of, like, a bedroom. And it has a huge van in it. And you are, can't get any further away than, like, two feet. And that, I didn't, I didn't like that room. This other friend of ours that went with us... She kind of wasn't into some of that stuff, too. She was kind of like... Some of it was kind of like, oh, this is interesting. And other stuff was like, this is just really sad. Okay, then there was this whole story. And I don't really even know how to explain it to you guys. Other than Jenna Jameson apparently used to live in this house. Where the museum is now. Okay? And her brother, before she was born or when she was young or something, witnessed her parents having satanic rituals in the basement. So you go, you go in the basement and see... First, you're going to see Bella, Bella Lugosi, you know, the Dracula actor. He had this mirror that you could, like, look into, and it was a portal. It was a vortex to hell, okay? I did not look in the mirror. I kept on walking. It was spooky. And then you go down in this room. Okay, this was the scary, probably one of the scariest things for me. Was you go down in this room, and they have a pentagon, pentagon um, drawn on the floor with all these candles. You're in the pitch black. And this is, like, the actual place that it, the, these rituals supposedly happen. And Zach Bagans, like, talked to them for a long time about it, texting. And then just, like, they went radio silent. So he was like, I don't know what happened. But, like, this was... Uh, that was that. Then there was this painting. Paint, painting. There's so many stories, you guys. I don't even know. There's, like, doll... A lot of dolls. A lot of the doll stuff was, like... This guy murdered his family with a shotgun, except for the little girl. Then the little girl had her doll, and she was. And the deal was that you couldn't wash the doll. And the doll's been passed down from generation to generation. It was in the same room that they have this like painting that they found after. I don't know, you guys. It's just it was a lot. They had a whole room. Well, Mel would have died about this because Mel is like dying to read a book about Bonnie and Clyde. Oh, this was the second room that we went into. So it was like a Western room and we went into it, it looked kind of like a saloon and they had like, it was about like gambling and stuff like that. And they had like Jesse James stuff in there and whatever. But they had, uh, they had Bonnie and Clyde memorabilia and they had the tackle box. He has, Zach Bagans has the tackle box that, um, Bonnie and Clyde, like, used for the two years they were on the road to, like, catch fish. And they have, like, you can see, like, the rods and stuff. I was, like, right up on it. I was, like, I've got to remember this for Mel. So that was that. And then um, one of the rooms was, like, celebrity things. And so you go in there, and it was, oh, this was kind of interesting for people that, like, are into reading. Truman Capote, the bathing suit and the shirt that he was wearing when he overdosed and died. And it's, like, all ripped up. And they have it on a mannequin. That was interesting. And they had, like, all, like, the pill bottles. I don't know if they're the actual pill bottles or not. And then they have, like, his death certificate next to it. But that was, like, that whole room was kind of interesting. It was more like they had kryptonite from the movie set of Superman. And then they had Patrick Swayze, a tooth of his. Um, his passport. 
and spiritual relics, which were just crystals. And his wife donated those to the museum. And then they had Michael Jackson's chair that was right next to his bed, which was where the doctor would sit, like when he came in. That was weird. They had Sharon Tate's wedding dress from the Manson murders. Um, they also had a chandelier of the family that was killed. If you've read the book, I read this far in the book, Helter Skelter. I haven't read much farther. But the part, the family, the LeBlanc family or whatever, I can't remember what their name is, but it's a chandelier that they had in their house. And actually, Zach Bagans used to own that hotel or the house for a while. And then, um, what else is in that room? The, the jacket that Robin Williams was wearing in What Dreams May Come. Something about Jerry Lewis. I'm like trying to see down the, what was down there at the end. Oh, the jacket that the guy wore in The Crow. And then they had a whole room where they had Ghostbuster memorabilia. That was kind of cool, but that was, you know. And then Peggy the doll. Oh, there was this whole box thing. Do you guys know about this box? If you follow this stuff, you'll probably know about this box. It's like it's supposed to be the most haunted thing in the entire world. I almost did not go into the room because it like the backstory to it really, really freaked me out. And um, it was like this, I don't know. It was like this concentration camp survivor and she had been like, she believed she was haunted by this spirit that came with her and she was given like the divot box or dirt box or whatever. And, and that's where Zach Bagans has had like, he was with like Post Malone. Like you watch it, you watch all these videos. He was with like Post Malone one night and he like touched, he put some woman's ashes on top in it. Like he got like, I don't know, he like couldn't move his hand or something like that. And Post Malone got him out of the room. He now has like all of this stuff, like glass encasings, on, uh, uh, but then another glass encasing and, and edged into it are all these like Hebrew prayers. Which that was interesting, and then, but like in each room, they play like the eeriest music too that like fits that. Um, they had a um, this mirror from they had a nautical room. They would call these rooms different rooms, and um, they had like this Titanic. Um, what do you call it? Like it was like a um, replica of the Titanic, and it was the mirror of the captain and. When the wife looked into it, she could see his his image or something, apparently. It wasn't one that he had on the, the ship. It was like he looked into it right before he went on the cruise. And they also have... This was interesting. My mom would have found this interesting because she used to kind of be obsessed with this case a little bit. My mom was kind of a bit of a conspiracy theorist. And so she would, like, follow these, like, murder cases. Not, like, true crime, but, like, stuff that would happen to celebrities. So they had the life preserver, the table, the candelabras with the candles in them, and the boat name from the back of the boat, from the Splendor, which was Natalie Wood and Robert Wagner's uh, sailboat. I think it was their sail sailboat. That Robert Wagner, if it wasn't, they were, that's the sailboat they were on um, off of Catalina Island when Natalie Wood drowned. That's supposedly speculatively People wondered if she was murdered. Her sister came and like wanted to like hold the candles. There was like a picture there of that, which that was very sweet. There's a lot of ways that they like really pay honor to like the victims and stuff that happened, which I will say I was super impressed with that because going in, you know, that's always kind of like something for me. Um, and yeah, and I will say this too, the guides are like unbelievable. Like, I don't know how they remember this stuff. And you can just tell these are people that are like obsessed with this kind of stuff, right? Like they're obsessed with it and you know, they all have like dyed black hair and all this kind of stuff. But like, they are so good. They're so entertaining. They answer any questions. And they have like all this stuff memorized verbatim, but they don't do it like from a script. I mean, it's just, like, they're really, really good, like museum docents, you know, like they're so good at it. So that was that. And then, is there another? oh, the beast house, the demon house, is it's a demon house. So that was from Gary, Indiana. Like that was the thing that we were most excited about seeing. And that was like the last thing before you walk out of the museum. They, I almost was kind of freaked about that. I didn't really want to watch it or look in there. But they, he ended up buying this house in Gary, Indiana. He said it was the most haunted place he'd ever been to. 
And then he ended up um, tearing it down and because he bought the house and then he tear, tore it down. Did I say that already? He bought the house, bought the house, bought the house. And then he tore it down, but he saved the stairs and the things that were around it, like the relics that were around it. And so, and the dirt too. He also brought dirt back. So he actually has like, it looks like a little basement or going down to a basement built into like this room. And then like it goes up and you can look behind it. That was kind of freaky, but I don't really know why the basement was freaky with that house. They didn't really go into explaining that, and I haven't watched a documentary yet. Apparently, there's a new documentary out on Discovery Plus. They constantly talk about watching. They're like, you need to watch the show. You need and they, there's quarantine episodes. They like talked about these quarantine episodes like the entire time that we were doing the tour. They're like, have you seen the quarantine episode? You should watch the quarantine episode. Discovery Plus. Um, so that was interesting. Anything else? There was this, like this whole Barnum and Bailey thing. I don't even understand. It wasn't scary. Like, there was just like this miniatures of the circus. And it was like this whole setup. And that kind of reminded me of like, do you remember the dollhouse of the um, science? Is it the Science and Industry Museum in Chicago? Which museum has the dollhouse in it? That, that reminded me of that. I mean, it was okay. It was cool. And they had like tickets on the wall from the circus, but it was like, what? It was kind of like going into this like circus theme. There was this one room that had like a shrunken head of this guy from Scotland, severed head, and you weren't supposed to look at the head, but you were supposed to walk in the room and walk around the head. So literally you walk in and the head is like in this box. <laughs> and you just like walk around and you don't look. I kind of like side-eyed it as I walked back. The guy was like, what do you think? And I was like, his head was smaller than I thought it would be. I mean, I didn't know what to say. Like, you know, I didn't even, couldn't even, like, I'm like side ironing it. Cause I'm like, I'm not going to have any attachments and bring him home. And I couldn't even really like, you know, tell that it was a head out of the corner of my eye. I was like, you know, it's just, I don't know. Some of it was just kind of really corny. You guys like really corny. I didn't understand it. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it would be, I don't know. I don't know what I thought. I thought it would be super, super scary. It wasn't, and I scare so easily. When we were going in with our group, it was like, I was, it was me and one of, well, me and Eric, and then one other guy, and these women were so funny. They were like, like friends of mine in Indiana, right? Like, and there was like these three women, and they were hilarious. I mean, they weren't friends of mine in My friends were with me, but you know what I'm saying. They are just like, Tanya. And so I said, uh, just gonna tell you guys right now, like I scare real easy and they all started laughing. And so, and I said, and I can't go last, <laughs> I can't go last. So, cause I was like, I'm not going to be the one in the very back. So, but yeah, I mean, I'm glad I did it. It was, you know, it was worth it to go. It was worth the money that we paid to go see it. I mean, I paid a lot more to go see other museums that I was 10 times more, or, you know, tourist attraction kind of stuff that I was like a hundred times more bored with. So yeah, it was really interesting. It was interesting. It was worth it. I mean, it's two hours, you guys. Like, you can't not see something that's going to be interesting to you, you know? But he pays, like, a fortune for this stuff. Like, they wouldn't tell us how much stuff costs, but, like, the one thing he told that they told us was... And they didn't, nobody asked, like, how much this stuff was. And she, the one um, guide said that um, he doesn't like tell them how much he pays for stuff. But he did say that, and I saw this on the ETV video. If you guys want to see what it looks like, uh, um, go watch the ETV special or that you just put in Zach Bagan's Haunted Museum and there's like two tours from the Entertainment Tonight did. I think it's ETV or Entertainment Tonight. And it basically shows it. But she, the, the machine that's in the Ghostbusters cost him $250,000. Oh, the other thing was the devil's chair from The Conjuring 3. That was kind of scary. And, like, that was one of the things that if you were, like, in the RIP, VIP group, RIP, you got to go close to the chair. I did not. I went up, but I didn't, like, get real close to it. That was kind of freaky. So, that was that. But I'm glad we did it. And then tomorrow... We're just having a pool day, and then we're going out to dinner tomorrow night um, for J Jason's birthday dinner is tomorrow night. Like That's like the big dinner, so that'll be fun. And I'm gonna get dressed up and look nice, and I don't know what I'm gonna wear yet. There's a uh, scale down here, and it doesn't work. <laughs> Thank God, because I don't know that I need to weigh myself over this trip. But anyway, We've had fun, had a good time so far. 
So I'm gonna get off here, I'm gonna start uploading this now so that, or get it ready now so that tomorrow it is like ready to go and I can upload it and um, yeah, so I'm sorry that it was, this, tonight's was up super late and um, I hopefully won't forget again and they'll be on time, so anyway. Well, all right, um, I'm gonna get off here now and is that it? To get off here now and um, if nobody else has told you this today I love you and I hope that you guys are having a and I know last night I didn't show like the view from our room I'm sure somebody has commented I haven't read the comments um, from last night well I just posted it too like 40 minutes ago um, but one night when the sound machine and stuff isn't going I will um, show you guys because it's really beautiful view from up here so Anyway, the view from up here <laughs> in Vegas. Anyway, uh, I mean, it really is, and you can see forever. I was just like looking at it last night. I was like, God, there's just like, like it just goes on forever and ever. We actually have, like, I love the fountains of the Bellagio, but the view here of like the Strip and like Vegas and beyond is much be more beautiful here because um, you can just see forever. So, because you're not like right in the middle of stuff. Anyway, like I said, if nobody else has told you this today, I love you. And I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Friday. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya. Oh, and for those that need to hear it, one more I love you. I sound good in here. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya.